What's up, traders? Welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Watchlist, where I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on the tickers listed up above. We'll, of course, be checking in on our broad market, and we have our core list of companies. Now, this week, we are not going to be taking a look at any additional trade ideas because I feel as though, you know, there are plenty of these bull flags scattered across the market right now. But given the low volume nature of last week, I want to wait and see how the new year starts to unfold and where the money starts to flow before giving you trade ideas I really have some confidence in. So be because of that, it'll be more of a hybrid approach, just like we did in last week's episode. So why don't we start by zooming out to a monthly chart here on our S&P, talking about candle structure and location, as we always do. For structure here on the monthly, we certainly have a bit of a hammer candle, correct? We get a significant lower wick, a nice little upper wick, but nothing, you know, overpowering there and a solid green body. And although it's not a bullish engulfing candle, the range is greater than the prior month's candle. So from that perspective, you know, if the sellers were going to take it underneath the low of that inverted hammer and really drag us back closer to that 430 level we discussed in the last monthly update. I mean, they had their opportunity. It just did not unfold. So from that perspective, we do need to look at this as bullish, right? We also know that the lower wick, as we just sort of mentioned, is where buyers stepped up. And regardless of where this forms, right, we've talked about hanging men in the past. It's not a bearish pattern, right? The buyers stepped up at a nuance level and they closed it higher than the prior month's close. So the S&P monthly chart does look fantastic. Uh, in terms of location, right, where are we as well? We made a new higher high and a new lower low underneath the prior month's low. But again, we talked about the nature of that being bought up and the stronger close. So it's not overly concerning in my estimation here on our SPY monthly chart. Now, while we're uh, on the longer term time horizon, I suppose, let's just discuss the fact that the S&P returned 26.5% this year in terms of, you know, realized price action here. That's not including the dividend, which is 3.3 times the average return return in a year. So could we be in store for a year of consolidation and sideways action? Yeah, it could be a potential uh, you know, possibility as we digest this monstrous move way above the average return in our S&P 500. Again, this candle would not suggest that we go lower or sideways. It would actually suggest higher, correct, with the buyers stepping up and closing strong. But again, just thinking about the broader picture here, 3.3 times the average return in one year, eh, maybe it's time for a little bit of consolidation or to lower the expectations of returns as we head into the new year. Let's drill down one more level here to the weekly and talk about what's going on um, on this chart, you can clearly see as we zoom in here, just breaking out up and over those highs. And again, that to me would strike me as bullish. Although on the weekly time frame, we do get a little bit more of a significant upper wick and more of an inverted hammer type candle, correct? So to me, it's not the strongest show of strength. It would have been better if we could have closed up at the highs, but nonetheless still closing outside of this dominant area of balance. Now, it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to sort of tell we're well above all of the support trend lines, right? As we break out of this range, if we come in with this trend channel that we've been monitoring for quite some time. I just want to see how we compare to the upper limit right, of the channel. So if I do something like that, drawing in our trend line resistance at the top, we're kind of right there. Okay. So the expectation should probably be, you know, either a little bit of a pullback here or sideways digestion. Now that we've come to the top end of the channel, again, we are breaking out of a significant area of consolidation. So maybe there is more, you know, pent up aggression here, so to speak, left in the tank to take us higher. But the structure of the weekly candle would suggest, right, with that upper wick, maybe, you know, expect sideways to maybe a little bit lower. To me, it's all about the back tests of the breakout point, which is a perfect segue back over to our daily time frame charts with our levels. So checking in on our S&P here, zooming in just a bit. Let me adjust this so it's easier on the eyes. Um, you know, obviously, just like many of the things, and as we discussed in that little intro there, it's a bull flag, right? So as of right now, any further pullbacks that really come down into about uh, 470, 40, that's the number to hold. That's that weekly breakout level that we were eyeballing. You can see we get interactions here, here, as well as in here. There is this intermediate from the prior high at the 473.50, but it's not as important as the 470.40 area. So to me, any pullbacks that ultimately hold this and start to bounce off of it for a clear higher low, something like that, is an incredibly bullish indication in your S&P 500. The other thing to watch out for is if the pullback is deeper, it's just all eyes on the 50 SMA, the blue line, and whether or not we support at that. Notice that it has tended to act as support in the past couple of interactions, although we did get the fake break, correct? Um, you know, to me, that would be the next major line in the sand. We've talked about some of the nuanced uh, areas that we have in here, but because this is a sort of a yearly recap, if you will, I don't want to dive into the weeds too, too much on our daily time frame chart. So the pattern 
pattern is bullish. Uh, obviously, we are falling out of this uh, three-day balance that we put in on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday falling out of that, right? So again, the expectation could be for a little bit lower into that 470.40 for the back test, but the pattern is overwhelmingly bullish. If we get the breakouts, we're looking for a clean move up and over that 479, the whole dollar just about for a move into the resistance trend line once again, which depending on time of week, let me just tell you where that would be. We're looking at 485.30s. If it's later on in the week, maybe 487, we'll call it on the high end. So uh, that's kind of the S&P in a nutshell from the top down perspective. What we're going to do now is do what we typically do in the Wednesday video. So taking a look at our sectors to see who is leading, who is losing, and where was the weight as of Friday. Um, and over the past week or so, we have seen some defensive posturing in our sectors here. So the XLP for consumer staples led the pack on Friday up 0.68%, whereas the uh, communications XLC was down at the bottom of the barrel down 1.38%. We know that again, XLP, we don't really want to see at the top. Same thing with builders, industrials, utilities, energy, and even real estate. I mean, just all of these sectors up here are lighter weight and defensive, right? Utilities is in there as well as staples. So it, it's not the greatest show of strength, to be quite honest with you. But we did see consolidation. We did see a little bit of a pullback. Maybe the money's rotating around as we're consolidating slash pulling back in here. And as and if, again, this is not a guarantee, but if the market starts to rotate higher, we would see the money start flowing once again into tech financials and healthcare, the three heaviest weighted sectors that we look at. So XLK down 0.49%, XLF for the second heaviest weighted uh, financials there down 0.18%. And then the XLV for healthcare down 0.42% coming in third in terms of weight. Let's check in on some of these charts and just make sure that risk isn't mounting in one place versus another. And then we'll sort of move along with the analysis here. I would still maintain that the XLK looks fantastic. Sure, it is pulling back. And we sort of realized that when we take a look at the TNX from the Wednesday video of last week, but remember that we've made a new higher high, so we can afford some sort of higher low pullback. Now, in an ideal world, we kind of hold on to this area right here. Let me just go ahead and draw that on as a horizontal one. And that's going to be around 171.78, uh, call it 172. It's also kind of marrying up with our support trend line as of right now. So that would be a thing of beauty if we gave ourselves a higher low here and then bounced out of it for a new higher high. It would keep the trend intact. Even if we pulled back a little bit deeper and got to that 50 SMA, which may meet up with us here closer to the 170, it would still be fine from a higher low perspective, noting that we have something like this on your XLK chart. So not seeing a ton of risk as of right now, but you do want to see it start to turn for a higher low pullback, uh, you know, north of that 50 SMA as sort of your line in the sand. Next up, XLF for financials. And these guys were starting to look a little bit promising here, putting some pressure on the downtrend line that we've been discussing for quite some time. We know that nothing really changes until we can break firmly up and over that level right there. So I would still be patient in your XLF, and I would still say that this does pose was a threat, noting that we've now resisted at that level one, two, three, four days in a row. And on Friday, we did close an inverted hammer, right? Some, so, you know, multiple upper wicks sort of wicking off of that 50 SMA, the resistance trend line, the overall top end of this zone right here. It's just, to me, it's not fully resolved that we can't have the confidence in the XLF in firmly breaking out until it actually does. So again, I do still think that there is some risk in your financial sector as of right now. So it is one to really keep an eye on. If we firmly break down underneath 39, I would say be careful, noting that we could rotate back down towards the bottom end of the range. I'm not saying that it's going to get here all in one go, but 37.25 really is the line in the sand if there is a more aggressive pullback in your XLF. While well, we're talking about financials, let's take a look at the TNX for our 10-year rate. If we do something like this, what you'll notice is overall we are just chugging sideways. However, we did break out of this kind of range in the past three trading uh, days of last week. So we are north of 15. Remember that as this moves higher, we should see the XLF start to put more pressure on the trend line, start to break that trend line. However, it is going to add adversely affect what we get in the XLK for the tech sector, right? As this goes higher, tech should actually go lower, uh, you know, in noting that their uh, margins, because their borrowing rate has gone up, is essentially being bitten into, right? They're losing some margin there. So that's the relationship, if you're not familiar. If this were to go lower and back into this range, obviously that will hurt financials, but benefit tech. So maybe we turn around in tech if that happens, right, as a higher low above your 50 SMA. So just keep an eye on the TNX and that relationship between tech and financials, uh, and then we'll move on over to our XLV to round out the heaviest weighted sectors for healthcare. And this chart continues to look absolutely phenomenal. No issues with it. Uh, sure, we did get two inverted hammers on Thursday and Friday. However, you know, we've clearly set a new higher high, a new all-time high in this uh, sector. So it's completely fine to get a higher low pullback. Just to give you an idea of where an ideal pullback would come into, we're looking at about uh, 139.60-ish area, just based on, right, we have prior high here, a little bit of resistance and then support. So something like that would be ideal in like a perfect world 
hold, but it could even head a little bit lower than that. As long as it holds above roughly 137, things are fine in your XLV as well. Again, just noting the relative strength here, big, big move to the upside over the past couple of weeks. Let's talk about volatility while we're sort of looking behind the curtain, if you will. So VIX is completely, you know, coming back down. It wasn't as aggressive to the downside over the past three days when we were getting that balance as you would, uh, may have thought. So we're still kind of in the midpoint of the range, the range being defined as this right here. Um, and, you know, it, it just kind of is what it is. It's not really telling us a whole lot, but what it is saying is, you know, we're not quite at 15. We're not really threatening a complacency effect, right? We've talked about that in the past when it comes down here and hovers down here, even a small uptick in volatility could lead to a larger one. So it's not really that case as of right now. It's also not like we're way up here, right? Just under the 2050 and risk doing something like this and popping and swinging right back up on out of it. So I would say volatility is in a pretty neutral place as of right now, not really giving us a whole lot of indications about what could be going on in the marketplace. Let's go back on over to, uh, actually we did talk about S and P levels. So, you know, our sectors are going to kind of confirm that patience, noting again that we did see defensive posturing into the end of the week here, also throughout the week. And we are kind of falling out of this flag. We talked about the rotation in the financials and the tech if the rates are going to sort of do something. So keep an eye on that relationship. Let's talk about our internals on the week. So if you're not familiar with this screen, go ahead and get familiar. Top right hand corner will tell you what this is all about and how you can set it up to help you make better intraday trading decisions. As of right now, things are fine in the internals. And honestly, what they support is the idea that on, you know, sort of Thursday, end of day and Friday, we just saw nothing more than a liquidation break. The reason I say that is because obviously the internals paired up nicely with the rally we saw on Monday. That's all fine. You get a nice cumulative build to the upside as well. The day of consolidation, again, just neutral internal. So that's absolutely fine. And then on the day of the liquidation break, so Thursday, end of day, right? Where were our uh, volume reads? Well, they were certainly bullish. And then only towards the end of the day, starting to pull back a little bit. The same thing here on the Friday session, a little bit more neutral though, right? The same thing holds true with the advanced decliners. They were bullish in the morning and then only sort of falling apart on that liquidation break. And the same thing on Friday, you would say the same thing about the ticks, right? Bullish and bullish here. So although there was that panic sell, to me, it's nothing more than a liquidation break. And what that means is that we have, you know, short term longs who are getting in at poor trade location who just close the position and say, get me out. I don't really like where I'm at. Um, and, you know, it's not really a stronger seller, a longer term seller who's looking to hold on to a short until we get to like, I don't know, 4600. Right. So this action here is likely anyone who is accumulating here expecting this just closing out for the end of the day. So that's really what the internals are telling us, which is more of a bullish thing. Right. It's not really like we're seeing a stronger seller emerge. It's just short term, you know, poor trade trade location longs in my estimation. Let's get on over to market profile. There's one interesting nuance that I want to share with you from this perspective, and that's going to be the spike from that uh, sort of liquidation break that we put in on the Thursday session. And the reason this is interesting is because on the uh, Friday session, notice that we sort of hung out in the spike, but never made it to the base of the single prints, the top of the spike. So to me, that's a little bit more of a bearish indication, right? So things sort of pushing and pulling here, uh, the fact that we could not accept back inside of the meat of the profile. So basically, up here or even inside of the balance still if we were to do something like this right and we actually closed relatively low underneath that so to me uh, a little bit, you know, pointing more towards the bear side here from the profile and where we actually accepted on the Friday session and where the point of control was left, right? It was here actually right at the low end of the consolidation range. So to me, you know, at first things, and we talked about this on Wednesday, right? Things were looking good with the point of control slowly migrating higher, even into the Thursday session, regardless of the liquidation break. But we know that on Friday, we can't argue with what was printed here. We actually broke down, we rejected the spike, we closed underneath it, and the point of control was lower. So all things to take into consideration here on the market profile. Let's go back on over and round out our broad market here with our QQQ. Once again, we're going to go back out to the monthly. So let me pop that back on. And this is a little bit different, right? This is different than what we saw in our S&P, just in terms of relative strength and the actual nature of the body of the candle. So in terms of structure, we just get something like this. I don't even have to use my perfect rectangles. It's more of a, you know, dragonfly doji, right? So very, very small body there. The open and close are about the same, although slightly below on the close. That's why it's red, of course. And we just get opposing tails, right? You certainly see an upper wick here and a lower wick here. If you were to just smash the two candles together, what you would be left with would kind of be Oops, let's actually bring out the perfect rectangles now. 
again, if you were to combine those two candles, you'd probably just be left with a doji, right? So it's really signaling a little bit more indecision here in our QQQ based on the structure as well as the location, right? We did not make a new higher high here. And of course, we do have that low underneath the prior month's low. However, it's not like we came all the way down into that area of support from the monthly bars here. Uh, what would that be? Closer to about 355, correct? So all things in the QQQ are kind of saying patience. Uh, it's not abundantly clear in terms of direction because we know we have that indecision candle. Let's drill on down to the weekly, see what else we can learn about the price action here. So this candle is obviously much more bearish. We get an inverted hammer, larger upper wick kind of sitting right on the top end of that balance. So it's all about, do we you know bounce off of this and then start to use the top end of that balance as support? Or do we firmly fall back down underneath? In which case we would likely have a look above and fail, right? If this is the range and this was our look above and we're gonna fail back down inside of it, we know that the target technically should be the low end of the range. That's how the uh, sort of balance rules would you know tell us and guide us as to what may potentially happen here from the weekly time frame. So definitely consider that on your QQQ, the fact that you know the weekly actually is not looking fantastic. And once again, just illustrating here, the lower high nature of what we got on this sort of most recent leg higher, whereas the S&Ps actually did make that higher high, right? So that's kind of what the weekly chart is telling us. Let's go on down to our daily with the levels and just kind of see where we're at here. Again, the chart pattern itself, this activity is certainly a bull flag. It's all about, do we find support here, turn around, so we don't get that look up, uh, look above and fail, or do we catch ourselves for a higher low off the 50 SMA and this floor of support here closer to 393.10, right? We've talked about the importance of that level in the past as well. It's not the base of the FOMC spike, but it is the lows from in here. And that's where we really battled through and found support slightly on that liquidation break day lower uh, that we discussed in prior videos. So that's really the number to watch out for for your higher low. If the pullback is a little bit more aggressive here, again, 50 SMA may pair up nicely with that for an area of super support. If it bounces off of it, obviously it's all about the recapture of 400 back to the upside, then all-time highs could be on the table. Of course, we will have to contend with these levels now that we have put that in as resistance. So let's just split the difference between those highs. We don't want to cherry pick. Let's call it 403.50 as that area of intermediate resistance before we get to the all-time high. Anything underneath the 50 SMA, sure, the base of the FOMC spike at the 388.78 could be in store, but noting that we, again, identified that look, below, uh, look above excuse me, and fail possibility from the weekly, if this starts to go, I would sort of be careful and, uh, and mindful of a situation that could unfold something like that down to about 378.50. So again, you know, just based on the nature of what last week was, the low volume week, the fact that we're consolidating into a flag, I would sort of want to see how the week unfolds before getting uh, aggressive here in our QQQ. Let's move on over to the IWM, talk about Russell 2000 and the small caps. Once again, going back out to the monthly time frame, what we'll see here not a whole lot, right? Honestly, just going sideways in this range. Of course, this uh, look above and fail. We talked about that last month, correct? We did ultimately come back down and retest the bottom end of the range. So that pattern has unfolded to its full extent. Now the question is that we're back inside the midpoint. Is it going to be a move back to the top or is it going to be a move back down towards the bottom? And once this range ultimately does break, I would expect some fireworks in our small caps. Again, this was a fairly disheartening move here, noting that we did take out the highs, but it just it, nothing really materialized correct? So to me, I would really be patient in your IWM and watch to see if this range can start to break. The hammer candle nature of this month's bar would indicate that buyers did step up where they were supposed to. So maybe that's a slightly bullish indication. Overall, the pattern is bullish, right? This is a monthly bull flag. We would expect higher out of it. But again, we're going to take it one day, one month, one week at a time in your IWM until this firmly gets a candle close outside of the range. Let's drill on down to the weekly time frame. And what we'll see here is almost the same thing, right? We get our range, something like this, a little bit more indecisive in terms of the weekly bar resisting right at that weekly 50 SMA. And again, in the midpoint of the range, it's not really where your edge exists. You know, we can either have 50-50 shot for higher or lower. It's either gonna be a breakout here or a breakdown here or we bounce back in towards the midpoint, right? We get mean reversion off of the low end or the high end of the range, uh, but ultimately sitting in the midpoint right now, not really seeing direction abundantly clearly. Let's go down to our daily time frame, of course, and talk about the pattern unfolding here. Once again, just like just about everything else we've seen so far today, we do get that bull flag activity. However, notice that multiple inverted hammers have printed off of your daily 200 SMA. We did not make it to the 50 SMA or the bottom of this gap overhead. So maybe that's a little bit more bare 
bearish. I would just, again, be patient in your IWM. If we start falling down underneath 220-250, watch for the rotation lower. 215 is that level of support up next. If we do break out of this flag to the upside, it's all about the gap fill overhead. Anything north of 226.69 fills up towards 228.63. So that's our broader marketplace in a nutshell. Let's move on into our companies now and wrap up the video. Um, so getting into Apple, what you'll notice, again, just like everything out there in the marketplace as of right now, just about, it is forming a bit of a bull flag, but based on what last week actually was, that holiday low volume trading week, I'm not entirely confident in it just yet. It really needs to prove itself to me and break out up and over 181 for me to want to be aggressively bullish on this. Obviously, blue sky territory is up and over that level. If we do start breaking down, it's all about 176. If we get into it, we are looking for that to hold as a higher low. If it does not, then we know that there's going to likely be rotation at least to the low end here at 172.50, if not lower, into these areas around 168. Now, depending on when and if that ultimately unfolds over the course of a couple days or you know a week or two, the 50 estimate could catch up by then. So start to look out for super supports closer to that 168 if the pullback does unfold. Again, the chart pattern here that is in front of our very eyes is, of course, bullish, but I'm not sure how much I trust it, again, given the nature of what last week was. Let's continue on and talk about Netflix. This one has been showing relative strength for, or excuse me, relative weakness. Let me not confuse you. Relative weakness for quite some time now, resisting and kind of rolling over at the resistance trend line, as you may expect. We've talked about this in the past that it really wasn't a long until we sort of cleared the resistance trend line on solid volume, and it just didn't happen, right? It never happened here. We broke it sideways through time, and into Friday, we're actually back down underneath it. We're also underneath that 605 area. So to me, it looks like it could go lower. We do have a set of lower highs. Let me clean that up, actually. So here you go. Here's highs, lower highs, now we're looking for equal lows, right? So we would look for a move into about 584.57. If that goes, there is support just underneath at the 576.45. So maybe, you know, sure, if you want to speculate and take some scalps short between here and here, that's fine. I would be ca uh, cautious in this area. And then if that ultimately gives, that's the next sort of real range you can trade through uh, between 576.45 down to about 554.83. That's a very important level from uh, in the past, right? If I do something like this, oops, there we go. You can see all of the interaction we had with that in the past. So to me, that would make a valid target here inside of Netflix. Not really seeing a, a strong case for upside as of right now. This is certainly not really within the bounds of healthy bull flag consolidation, ultimately happening in a downtrend as well. Next up, we have Tesla. And again, bull flag, but how much you trust it? Eh, I'm not entirely sure as of right now. You can clearly see the volume taper in this one throughout the course of the week as we come into the resistance trend line. However, I also don't want you to forget, right? Whenever we're looking at patterns, it's a good thing to see the consolidation portion, the pullback portion to be happening on lower volume. And then as and if it does break out, we want to see the volume come back into the stock, correct? So, hey, maybe it was a good thing uh, that we did see this consolidation over the course of a holiday week. So as of right now, 50 SMA is acting as support. Obviously, your break out point is back up and over the resistance trend line. The more conservative trader probably waits for the break of the flag highs at 11.17.50. In that instance, either one, whatever you decide to wait for, you're looking for a target here close to the top end of the daily range at around 11.60. After that, you can walk it up, you know, looking at the gap from in here. And then, of course, all-time highs, a little bit aggressive, but based on the nature of the flag and the length of the pull pattern there, wouldn't be sort of off the table based on a full 100% expected move from the pattern, right? If we do start to break down underneath the 50 SMA, as we've said in the past, it's simply all about 1,000. Do we hold up here for a higher low from this perspective or not? So 1,000 is the line in the sand inside of Tesla. Alibaba is up next. And zooming in on this one, still just kind of, you know, chopping around. We did talk about uh, the potential for a dead cat bounce here, and that's ultimately what we got on that Thursday session. So consolidating on Friday in the upper half of that daily range, it's not the most aggressive, um, you know, breakdown candle that we saw on Friday. So could this turn into a shorter time frame, you know, like 30 minute hourly, something like that? Bull flag? Absolutely it could. So to me, the breakout point is just up and over 122.50. If that does occur and we can get some solid closes above, we're looking for that rotation into 130. We've talked about the importance of that level in the past, where it's coming from. Big, big, big area of weekly support from, I think it was roughly three years ago now. Uh, to the downside, if this does break down under the 50% mark of that candle range, just looking for the rotation to the lows at 109.39. Next up, Facebook. This one just incredibly choppy and difficult to read. It's sort of, you know, big, big fake break in my estimation, at least up and over. That 338 we had from in the past, but I want to adjust the level to here at the 336.50, just much more interactive 
action at that level. Uh, so I like it a little bit better, but ultimately coming back down into it, undoing all of the work that was done on the Monday session. And if we were to look at a weekly candle here, it would be something like this, right? There's your open, there's your close. So that, uh, you know, is the body. Obviously the upper wick would look something like that on the weekly with no lower wick. So that's an incredibly bearish indication, right? The big upper wick indicating some sellers hanging out there. Any breakdowns underneath 336.50 likely take us here to the low end of this prior chop range around 323.25. Anything underneath that, you can keep walking them down. We have 309.50. Again, this thing's just, a, you know, very, very choppy right now. If you do something like this, we start to get a larger range. Sure, we are in the upper third up here. So if it wants to consolidate there, fine, that's a good thing. Uh, but if it falls back down into the midpoint, again, your edge really does not exist in here. I'd expect more chop. And obviously it gets more bearish if we start falling underneath that 323.25. Next up, we have Facebook, or excuse me, NVIDIA. We just did Facebook. Uh, and zooming in on this one, what we get is not really the flag nature. Again, this pullback here is a bit more aggressive than what we would like to see. Uh, so maybe, you know, it does have the 50 SMA going for it as of right now, but two inverted hammers back to back, four days of red. Again, an inverted hammer would be the uh, sort of look on the weekly time frame here. So it's all about, do we support at the 50 SMA? Do we come back down to the low end of the range from in here at the 287.50? Remember that it's gonna be very complicated trading for downside when we have all of these supports just underneath us. Maybe if we start to break down underneath the 287, 750, there's a rotation to the top end of the gap here at the 271.39. And we know that the more bearish trade is firmly underneath this to trade into 250, really the bottom end of the gap. Notice that this is just a very small area of uh, prior resistance, which led to a breakout. So that's why it's on our radar. But ultimately speaking, the next major structural area is the top of the gap at 239.22. So downside, it's not looking, you know, extremely attractive until we can really start taking out some of these levels that we have as supports directly underneath us. So 50 SMA, back test of resistance trend line. This area here, 287.50. I mean, all of that stuff could potentially provide some bounces. If that does happen, it's just a move back to the midpoint of this overall range from in here, correct? At the 308.69. We've talked about 310, treating that as sort of a zone um, in some prior videos, right? So NVIDIA, sort of a be patient play in my estimation. It's not really abundantly clear on direction. We're kind of at the low end of the range. We have all this support underneath us. I would wait to see how the beginning parts of 2022 ultimately start to unfold in this name. Microsoft is up next. Zooming in on this guy. This bull flag is looking a little bit healthier. looks more, uh, you know, on par with what we see in the S&P as well as the QQQ. Sure, we had three days of balance falling out of it on Friday, but overwhelmingly still high up in the uh, sort of uh, range of the flag. Now, what's interesting here is the fact that we talked about in the prior video as well, this potentially acting as double bottom. Here's your neckline. Obviously, it was a failed double bottom. We did not take out the neckline uh, and we're moving a little bit lower. So the question will be, do we catch ourselves for a higher low, something that would look like that? in which case we start to build an ascending triangle, right? So let me just draw out what that would look like. Something like this, subsequent touches, we get a support trend line, flat highs. There's your ascending triangle, eventually leading to some sort of breakout higher. So that's kind of the pattern that I would start of, uh, sort of start to look for inside of Microsoft. It doesn't have to unfold that way, but it's just something to monitor for. In an ideal world, we uh, catch ourselves for support at the 50 SMA, or there's kind of a level right around in here, 335, almost right where we're at. If I do something like this, you can see we get prior lows. Even in here, if you just make pretend and extend that to left, prior lows, resistance, resistance, resistance. So any little bit of uh, pullback that comes here, 334.34 could be an interesting level to see if we get that higher low reattempt here and then break for the all-time high. So that's what I'm seeing in Microsoft. The only bearish indication is probably back down underneath this here at the 329 quarter. If that happens, we know we have 324.30 coming from the lows in here, highs from in here, and then the double bottom lows ultimately closer to. Uh, that's going to be 318.25-ish. So there is lots of supports underneath us. However, more bearish if we start taking out this area closer to 329 quarter really use that as kind of your over or under above more bullish below obviously a little bit more bearish here in microsoft lastly we have amazon the beast here really going nowhere and i actually think this might be worth doing if we go on over to a monthly chart on amazon I mean, look at that thing. Doesn't that strike you as being extremely similar to what we saw in the IWM? We've really gone nowhere over the past couple of months here. Sure, there have been spurs where it's looked like we've gotten out of range. Uh, but again, just like the IWM, each time we've fallen back down inside of the overall range. So to me, yeah, it is a monthly bull flag here, but two fake breakouts, 
eh, I don't know what it's going to do over the course of the next year. To me, it would ultimately just be, let's get some firm acceptance, right? A monthly bar that close outside of this range, which we've just drawn in. Let's go back on down to the daily and talk about levels here. Again, extremely choppy in the midpoint of the weekly, or excuse me, monthly range, as well as sort of stuck in this area. We've talked about this in the past as well. Here's your midpoint of this range breaking down underneath it on the Friday session. Ultimately, I would want to see if we come all the way into that 3300. If so, watch for a quick dead cat bounce, lower high at the midpoint, closer to 3375. In that case, a rollover and reattempt here in short proximity of time should lead to some sort of breakdown. We know that we have 3176 underneath us there. If there's a turnaround all the way to the top end of the range, obviously you're just looking at 3460. Nothing about this chart would scream that we're headed up towards 3585, but that would really be the next major target if the range were to break to the upside here. And again, nothing is really saying that based on what we're seeing on the daily. We can also start to draw in a bit of a resistance trend line, something that would look like this, right? If we do something like that, you can clearly see it's just kind of indicating here's your anchor, lower sets of highs, lower highs, lower highs here off the resistance trend line. So Amazon not really looking so hot as we head into the new year here. That's ultimately going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it today or learned anything new, let me know in the comment section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Um, don't forget that our secondary channel is linked down below in the description. I wish you all a great trading new year. I wish you all a green trading new year. And with that, we're going to wrap up the video.